Well, hello there. Um... What first comes to mind when you think of the word pizza? Maybe an old Italian man passing down his recipe from child to child among the sprawling hills of Naples. Or maybe it's the famous sun-dried tomatoes of Sicily. Or maybe the medical establishment of Germany. If your answer is the latter, then you're probably a big fucking stan of Dr. Oka frozen pizzas. Founded in 1981, by a man named August Ortka, the German company started with baking products before moving on to cooler foods like pizza. After August died, the running of the company was taken over by one Rudolf August Ortka, entrepreneur, family man, art collector, and serving member of the Nazi SS Waffen during World War II. According to Wikipedia, when Rudolf Otka stepped down from his leadership position, the fourth generation of the Otka family took over from him. The family ownership apparently established the management principle that the interests of the company have priority over those of the family. A bit like a German pizza-based succession. The current head of the company is Richard Otka who was born in 1951. He's a German billionaire, and on the 14th of December 1976, the then 25-year-old student was kidnapped by 34-year-old Dieter Zlov, a Slovene-born mechanic who locked him into a crate and linked his feet and wrists to manacles that would give him electric shocks if he screamed or tried to break out. While Otka was 1.94 metres tall, the crate was 1.54 metres. 
and in the early hours of the 15th of December, a noise sparked off a near-fatal shock that broke Otka's thighs and two of his ribs as he thumped against the crate. His screams prolonged the shocks by 10 seconds, and the pain was such that he briefly wanted to die. I... oh my god. I didn't realise it was going to be such a dark Wikipedia entry for a frozen pizza company. Is a beautiful ristorante Dr. Otka uh, pizza. I went for the basic mozzarella version for this video because I have a kind of a, a little bit of a philosophy around pizza, which is that before I have any pizza, you know, any any variety of topping or uh, style from a place. I want to make sure that they can get a margarita right because if you can't even get the base level of a margarita right I'm not going to be I'm not going to be messing with you. Let me just start by saying that I'm actually really happy uh, with how cooked this is. I feel like I cooked it the exact perfect amount. I wasn't timing it. See, the thing about me is I'm a renegade and I play by my own rules. Uh, sometimes it's unorthodox, but it always gets results. Let's uh, take a bite, shall we, and analyse and review this Dr. Oatka Ristorante Mozzarella Frozen Pizza. Just leaning over for a slice. Uh, this one will do this slice. Lean over for a slice. Mm, oh. Now, already I think you can see that one big problem with these pizzas is that the cheese is stringy but I would say that it has more of a kind of like a rubbery, more of a rubbery texture. You're not going to get, when you first cut it you might get a nice string but if you leave it for a couple of minutes the cheese is going to all harden again. What I would say is I like the way that the mozzarella does actually brown. I think this pizza has blobs of pesto on it. I hope they're blobs of pesto because if they're not blobs of pesto then that means that they are something else what's green and runny. Kind of like the the shit of a goose but I don't think it is that. That would be, I mean even for Nazis that would be cruel wouldn't it? I should also state that I'm not the biggest fan of like actual pieces of tomato on a frozen pizza, like I like it on a fresh pizza, or I like it sun-dried is the is my personal favourite way to have tomatoes on a pizza. But restaurants have made it like a really, like a staple of theirs to include them. And you know what, they're, they're doing their own thing. Usually though I do take some off, I don't know if anyone else does this, but when I open the frozen pizza, I'll take about half of the tomatoes off of the top because I feel like they go a bit overboard. I mean, so like the Dr. Oatka pizzas, they are on the more expensive side of the frozen pizza, which is something I don't really understand because I don't think they're actually, you know, spoiler warning, they're not my favourite. I guess they overcompensate by like whacking 
a shitload of tomatoes on there. Anyway, enough for the yabba, dabba doing. Let's get a chewing. <laughs> Every one of these like food um, channels needs a catchphrase. I've just come up with one straight out of the gate. No, no pre-preparing. Yabba dabba doing. Let's get a chewing. So as you can see there, what I was saying about the stringiness of the cheese being that if you don't if you don't eat it immediately after it comes out of the oven, I mean I've had this laying around for only about three minutes and the cheese is already hardened so then when you pull away and you want to get that nice string, the string theory, Stephen Hawking, <laughs> um, instead you get sort of like a lump of tasty, nice flavoured flubber and you have to then kind of go out, out, out and eat more than you were planning on. You have to take several bites so as to avoid getting pizza sauce all down your pretty sundress. Flavour wise, I'm going to take another bite just to, just to get a, you know, just to, just to refine, just to refine my palate. <laughs> So it, yeah, I like it. It's uh, the cheese is very flavor flavorsome. Um, actually, one thing that I haven't noticed before is that it actually has a very nice sauce, very nice flavor. One critique I would give of the um, the Ristorante Doctor Ulka series is that I feel like it would benefit a lot more from additional herbs and things or herbs if you're stupid. Um, one thing I normally do, and I do this with a lot of frozen pizzas actually, um, because a lot of them, you know, they skimp on the ingredients of the herbs. So I've actually got a big bag of oregano or oregano if you're, you know, stupid. And I tend to sprinkle that on and just, just, to, just to give it a little bit of a... But I haven't done it today because obviously that would be unfair. I want to take the pizza as it comes. I want to give you my honest perspective. The pesto tastes like nothing. Um, it may as well not be there. Should state though, if you do have a nut allergy, may, I don't think you can have pesto, can you? So maybe stay away from this pizza. But having said that, it doesn't really taste anything like pesto, so maybe my goose theory was true. If so, hey, it's not so bad. So I've got to the crust now. I'm at the crust. This is another pet peeve I have with the Ristorante range, is that they don't really have a crust. There's no distinguishable crust. The end of the pizza is just as thin as the pizza itself, and oh boy, is it a thin one. And I love a thin base. I think thin base is honestly where it's at. I mean, you have to admit, whoever you are, except for um, Chicago style, thin base is best. You know, you don't want to overpower uh, everything with bread, you know, but I like the crust, okay, I'm a crust fan, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a crusty, I'm a crust head, I'm a bit of a crust head when it comes down to it, and I guess I like a bit of differenti differ differenti differentiation when it comes to the crust. I want a crust to leave and then pick at at the end, you know, oh, oh, I've finished, but I've got all my crusts and I'm still a bit peckish, so I'm gonna dip these crusts in some, some kind of mystery sauce and mmm, crusts, you know? Also, crusts are good to hold. I get the impression that this pizza was designed 
to use a knife and fork with and I'm not against that in theory but you only need that really when a pizza is very large I think so I just don't know what they're doing so I think the mozzarella is nice the mozzarella is definitely it definitely gets a point from me I think it's good mozzarella I've had worse mozzarella on frozen pizzas let's pretend that's a crust and let's leave that and have another bit I don't want you to get the impression that I'm not enjoying this because I am I, I like these pizzas but what I would say is I mainly eat these the sort of uh, you know the Dr Oatka brand I mainly go for the Dr Oatka brand when it's late and I'm coming back from a gig or you know it's only news agents open to me it's a very it, it it's a news agent pizza I only bought it from a supermarket today because well it's the daytime and I can get it a bit cheaper but for me it's like when there's nothing else available you get this and it is always quite expensive for what it is sometimes it can be up to four pounds today I got it for two pound fifty which I think is still too much for it actually I don't want to be harsh you know, I'm not trying to be harsh I'm trying to be fair this is the first episode so you I can't actively compare it to other pizzas but in my head I am comparing it to other pizzas that I've had in the past and to me 250 is 50p too much do you know what I mean but even so I don't want you to think it's bad it's bad like I like I do like it but when I buy it it is usually sort of begrudgingly like oh god here we go I have to drop another four pounds on one of these just because I'm hungry and desperate and it's late but for all the criticisms I can make of Dr Oka and there are a lot particularly the Nazi stuff one thing you can't criticize the good doctor for is availability that they are everywhere you know if a, if a news agent has a frozen section a freezer they've splashed out they're gonna have some dr oakers in there because all news agents are fascists just i'm gonna say it i said it i'm quite a slow eater generally and i feel like the longer you stay with this pizza the sort of worse it gets I feel like ristorante is not the kind of pizza that benefits from being eaten cold or even lukewarm I'd say straight out of the oven hot it's good but leave it for any longer than like five ten minutes and it becomes a slog you know oh no I've got to finish this pizza I mean it's never a slog I'll always eat pizza no matter what condition it's in if it's in the dirt if I find a, a, a wet defrosted uncooked pizza in a skip I'll eat that but I'm just trying to be critical here I'm just trying to be fair and, and, and you know be honest and the truth is compared to other pizzas I've had it's not a joy to eat at this consistency it's quite a rubbery pizza the base is often quite like I would say it's like a digestive biscuit or a cookie so what's the final score what's the final diagnosis for the doctor will dr oka be given um the award for best doctor or will he be struck off for negligence in the pizza field will dr oka's war crimes catch up with him now that I've spread the information that I read on Wikipedia far and wide will you still feel okay about eating Dr. Oka pizzas? because I I do, I do, I still feel okay about it I can't support the Nazis but I also can't in good conscience drop support for a humble pizza maker well look, I give this particular Dr. Oka pizza and Dr. Oka pizzas in general as a broad review I give them it would have been five crusts out of ten because I, I grade on crusts I score by crusts it would have been five but the Nazism just drops it down one that's un okay that's unfair 
0.5. So it's 4.5. Would have been 5, but because of the Nazi stuff, 4.5. Thank you for watching. Um, if you enjoyed it, you can subscribe. You should do that because then you'll get updates on when I'm eating more pizza. It's not always going to be frozen pizzas. Sometimes it'll be in a restaurant. I might have guests. Um, I might even make a pizza. The Jen style. If you enjoyed Slice Bitch, make sure to give it a like and subscribe and ring the bell, whatever that does. And then I'll keep making more. If you'd like to support me, you can do so on Patreon at patreon.com slash Jen Ives. Uh, and you'll get access not only to exclusive Slice Bitch content, but also lots of other stuff that I do. Thanks for watching Slice Bitch. Peace is nice. Yum, yum, yum. Bye.